I would like to greet Chapter President of the Ilocos Norte Dental Chapter, Dr. Florence Abundo Manuel, uh, the President-Elect of the Ilocos Norte Dental Chapter, Dr. Ellis James Ranada, my and my actual uh, periodontist, Dr. Rani Reyes, who is the PRC Chairman of the Board of Dentistry, Dr. Corazon Flores, the PDA President, the PDA Vice President for Luzon North, Dr. Emmanuel Centeno, Dr. Vitar Salazar, the outgoing President, the officers and members of the Philippine Dental Association in Lobos Northern Chapter, guests, ladies and gentlemen, na impag na bigat yu amin na buhu. Naragsaka na, launay na makisang kata kayo amin, tata na bigat. At this early juncture, let me first congratulate the PDA in Lobos Norte chapter on its 68th induction ceremony. Also to the inductees today, the newly elected officers who will continue the leadership of your PDA in Lobos Norte dental chapter. Seriously, in all my research and preparations for these past events, I've been able to educate myself a little bit, not only about the dental science of dentistry, but also the status of the dental profession in the Philippines. My hearty congratulations to the chapter officers and warm welcome to our new dentists, stem from my knowing that our dentists have a very major part to play in our society, especially and uh, obviously in the delivery of basic health to our community and our country. To lay the premise, may I paint a realistic, if somewhat bleak, picture of the state of our oral health care here in the Philippines today. In the 2011 National Monitoring and Evaluation Dental Survey, conducted by the DOH National Center for Disease Prevention and Control, in partnership with the UP, National Institute of Health, it revealed the statistics reveal that 87.4% of Filipinos suffer from dental caries, while 48.3% have periodontal or gum disease. Ibig sabihin, halos siyam sa bawat sampo ay may sira ng ipin. At lima din sa bawat sampo ay may meron din problema sa gilangit. Didagdag din natin ang ipininyag ng Metro Dental Clinic noong 2013 na top seven oral health problems ng mga Pilipino. Number one, the, the, well, uh, number seven is oral cancer. Number six is an unattractive smile. Five is tooth sensitivity or pangingilo. Four is mouth sores, singaw. Three is gum disease, two tooth decay, and the number one naman is bad breath. That is precisely why I'm invigorated by the news that another batch of 200 plus dentists have reinforced the ranks of the Philippine dental profession. What the latest me more is that a fraction of these new dentists hail from our beloved province of Ilocos Norte. The sad thing though is that we may be facing an uphill battle. Despite the manpower reinforcements with the entrance of new dentists every year, we are still outnumbered. According to the PRC, there are approximately 21,000 active dental practitioners in the Philippines today. That is around a ratio of 1 to 4,285, or one dentist for every 4,285 persons. It means that we have a shortage of dentists in our country, for according to the PRC, the ratio should be 1 to 3,000. There also seems to be an unequal or maldistribution of dentists in the Philippines, wherein most practitioners are concentrated in urban areas, which means that the people in the countryside, in far-flung barangays, do not have access to dentists. These reported manpower constraints result in a huge setback in our fight against oral health problems. So we have to not only produce more dentists, but even improve their quality, beef up our manpower requirements, and to do this, we have to launch a massive information campaign to our citizens about the dismal state of our oral health and the recognized need for new dentists. The PDA, among other civic and relevant professional groups, should be at the forefront of that campaign. The government has to play its part in this. This means that 
Our, the government should provide for an enabling environment for our dental professions to manifest and render their much needed public service to the community, especially to those living in the countryside. For one, government may rethink its national health service policy by creating a dedicated agency under the DAOH. To do this, it is highly recommended that the government restore in a more invigorated form the Bureau of Dental Health Services in the DOH. That is something that is right now being studied in Congress. I do not think that there is any great opposition to the proposal, but merely that we have to go through the process of uh, the deliberations in Congress. I certainly am expecting the passage in the House, and uh, certainly I will be supporting its passage in the Senate. I submit that the government should provide a just share in the national budget in the area of public dental health services. The government should also help create a conducive environment for self-employed dental practitioners to firmly establish themselves and grow in strength and numbers as productive citizens and professionals. This mandates the government to ensure the availability and affordability of the needed dental equipment and paraphernalia in the market. Most importantly, the government must restrain itself from implementing a crippling taxation scheme upon our self-employed professionals, including our dentists. The taxation system should be healthy and sensible in order not to dissuade and encourage our dentists from trying their luck in legitimate private practice. According to the Dean of University of the Philippines College of Dentistry, 70% of Filipinos do not visit their dentists regularly. <laughs> Dr. Miranda also adds that of the 30% who patronize their dental professionals, 10% go to private clinics, while 20% visit government clinics. Again, through a national information campaign, all of us can help convince the 90% of our countrymen who have tooth problems and the 50% who have gum problems to regularly visit their local dentist for immediate intervention. Not only that, we now have to convince the 70% of us Filipinos to make it a regular habit of visiting their dentist. In furtherance of the open of your ideas, I also call on everyone here the able leadership of your incoming set of officers who are led by President elect Dr. Renata to continue to provide services to our needy constituents for our all inclusive development of our country. Remember, you dentists are all participants in the task of nation building. As a final word, the ASEAN integration, as mandated by the ASEAN Mutual Recognition Agreement, is coming in 2015. By that time, we have an open, we have to open the practice of all professions, foreign and national. Thus, not only the dent, not only in the area of dentistry, but in all other sectors of our economy and our service industries, we will be tested against and compared with our European counterparts. It is a big challenge for us all because we have already experienced the difficult economic environment now. However, looking at it positively. It is also good in the sense that we will also gain the opportunity to showcase to us here, the, in the international scene, the Filipino brand of dental practice. A dental practice that may puso at may pagmamanasake. Let us work together then to raise oral health awareness in the region and the entire country. Let us do our share in eradicating dental disease. Maraming salamat sa pagkumbina niyo sa akin, sa inyong apanglingkod. The Stiagina Katakayamin, Agpiyak, the PDA Ilocos Northern Dental Chapter, Maraming Maraming Salamat po, the Stiagina Katakayamin, the Bagal Tawiyamin, the Kailan, the Kakapsat, the Ilocos Northern. Thank you.